Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all don't mind if I sing a little song? I don't know if you, you better help me at Pastor Josh. Come on. See if everything is on. Supposed to be on? All right. Okay. Well, hallelujah. In prison's chains. With bleeding stripes Paul and Silas They prayed all night And in their pain Began to see Their chains were loosed And they we're free. Help me. I bless your name. I bless your name. I give you honor. I give you praise. Of the life, the truth, the way. I bless your name. I bless your name. Some midnight hour. should find you're in a prison of your mind reach out and pray defy those chains And they will fall in Jesus' name. I bless your name. Come on, let me hear you sing it with me. Come on. I bless your name. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you praise you are the life that you the way you are the life the truth the way I bless your name I bless your name let's try this little verse again some midnight hour If you should find You're in a prison Of your mind Reach out and pray And they will fall in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing it together. I bless your name. Come on, let me hear you sing it. I bless your name. I bless your name. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you praise. You are the life that you the way. You are the life, the truth, the way. 
God bless your name. God bless your name. You are the life, the truth, the way. God bless your name. God bless your name. Come on, bless him. Bless him. Thank you, Pastor John. Thank you, my friend. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for the honor given me, sir, to mount your pulpit. Uh, you know that we cannot just allow anybody to mount our pulpits. Why? You have some crazy people out there. I know you haven't met some of them, but live long, live long. You'll, you'll meet some of them. But I esteem this a great honor for the confidence that your pastor has. Allow me to step into his pulpit. I was praying and asking God for direction, and I pray that this be the right one. What do I share with you this morning? Then let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, if you would. Deuteronomy, I know we're a New Testament believing church, but you know there's some nuggets in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 2. Allow me to read 1, 2, and 3. Deuteronomy chapter 2 from verse 1, 2, and 3. King James Version. He says, Then we turned and looked and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me. And we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You've compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. Father, we've read the hearing of your people. Help me to speak the oracles of God. I pray every word I speak, let it be seasoned with the anointing. We ask this for Christ. Amen. 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 You've compassed this mountain long enough. I was raised speaking another language. Afrikaans. Afrikaans is Dutch. Uh, so that's more or less what we speak in South Africa. Uh, there's some other languages too. But English came to me very late. And so sometimes I still have a struggle. But uh, I'm getting better every day. I even understand myself these days when I speak English. <laughs> but I'm looking at the word compass. And just this is for me. The word compass. It just literally means circled, round, go around. There was a man by the name of Albert Einstein. He said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Amen. Amen. God says here to Moses, you've compassed this mountain long enough. You've been going around in circles long enough. Now get up and go north. Hmm. I came to this house this morning with a word in my spirit, change. Uh -huh. God said this is a season of change and I'm talking major change. Hallelujah. Uh, I believe God spoke to me and said prophesy and tell my people change is coming. Major shifts are going to be taking place. God said to prophesy change so that his people could participate and cooperate in, uh, with him in the process. Now, you cannot, you understand, you cannot stop change from happening around you. You could either adjust to it or you can resist it. So the word, the word of the Lord says, you've been in this place long enough. Don't get the wrong idea now. 
So now the devil says, oh, you've been around here long enough time to move no stairs. He's talking about something else. <laughs> All right. In other words, you've been in this life cycle long enough. You've been in the situation long enough. You've been fighting this losing battle long enough. It's time for a change of strategy. Mm, now it may be your financial situation. It might even be in your relationships. It might even be your emotion, your emotional area of your life. It may be physical, a physical situation. You're struggling with your health. It may be your spiritual life, your walk with God, your experience with God, your ministry. But God said it is time for a change. Is anybody ready for a change? Is anybody? sick and tired of just being sick and tired is anybody fed up with the present situation is anybody ready to break out of the cycle of debt is anybody ready to break that cycle of sickness to break that cycle of depression Uh, am I talking to anybody who's tired of going around and around and around the same old problem day after day after day God said you've come past this mountain long enough now see Pastor Steve he kind of tells you talk tell somebody so I'm going to do the same thing I want you to lean over to your neighbor don't lean too heavy come, come on just lean on me so don't lean too much but lean over there and just nudge somebody and tell them uh, you've come past this mountain long enough now, now, tell, now I want you to tell him enough is enough. Now I want you to talk to the devil and tell the devil I've had enough. Now, <laughs> mm, now, now, see, I, I, I don't want to teach you how to cuss. You know how to do that all by yourself. <laughs> uh, but I want, I, I, but I've got to let you know. You've got to talk to yourself sometimes and tell yourself, uh, I've had enough hell in my life. Uh-huh. I've had enough fear, uh, yes, and and confusion in my life. Uh, I've had enough discouragement. I've had enough lack, uh, and I've had enough disappointments. Uh, I have, I've had enough rejections and betrayals I've had enough misery I've had enough shame in my life could you just lean over to somebody and tell them uh, tell them I, 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 I'm ready for a change come on say I'm ready for a change I'm ready for a turnaround is anybody ready for a turnaround Now, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody in this house, you need to turn around and you need it today. You need it actually right now. Somebody most probably in this house, you're facing a situation that is impossible for you to change. Mm, literally, it's out of your hands. Somebody in this house, most probably this morning, oh uh, yeah, you're facing a legal situation and you need God to move and turn that thing around for you. Somebody else here this morning listening to me. You need a miracle in your finances. You've done everything that you know what to do. But instead of things getting better, it looks worse. Somebody else in this place here this morning you're standing in the gap for your children and you know that if God don't move, they're going to be in serious trouble. Uh, but I've come to prophesy to you in this house here this morning uh, that we serve a God of turnarounds. Uh, the Bible is a book of turnarounds from Genesis down to Revelation. We see God turning things around. Now one of the worst case scenarios in the Bible is found in the book of Ezekiel. And you remember it's in chapter 37 talking about the valley of dry bones. Now you understand and most probably you'll agree with me the situation looked hopeless. <laughs> it looked impossible beyond uh, uh, the point of no return. Mm. <laughs> but when the man of God started prophesying to those bones something started happening. You know what happened? 
change. Uh huh. Yeah, things started changing. The situation started turning around. Bones started coming together. They just didn't come together, but every bone found its matching bone. When the prophet was finished prophesying uh, in that very same place where there was nothing but dry bones, now there stood a mighty army fully equipped and empowered to fight. <laughs> Uh, neighbor, 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 <laughs> something's getting ready to change. <laughs> I feel a turnaround in the atmosphere. <laughs> I feel around a turnaround uh, in this house here this morning. <laughs> I feel a turnaround anointing rising up in my spirit even right now. Somebody is getting a breakthrough right now. And if I speak about your situation, you better claim it for yourself. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting free right now. You're getting free in your mind. Somebody's getting free in your emotions. Somebody's financial situation is turning around even right now. Somebody's ministry is turning around. Your marriage is turning around. Now I know that marriage was headed for the rocks, but this morning it's headed for the rock. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody's getting healing in your body right now. Sickness is leaving you right now. Pain is leaving your body right now. Why? Because with his stripes, he were healed. First Peter 2.24. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Mm. I'm here to say to you this morning, your season is changing. Your season is changing. You've been... In a winter season. <laughs> and it looked like. And it felt like. That everything was dying in you and around you. <laughs> ah, but I've come to let you know. It's a new season. Mm -hmm. It's a season of new beginnings. <laughs> so I prophesy new beginnings for you. <laughs> new beginnings for you. <laughs> I prophesy new doors for your life. <laughs> I prophesy new doors in your ministry. <laughs> new connections a new anointing I prophesy new fire new jobs I prophesy promotions new avenues of, of income new joy new friends new confidence new strength new health I prophesy that in your life I believe somebody's going to go where they've never gone before. <laughs> somebody's going to take some new steps into some new territory. Is anybody, to, is anybody ready to step out of the old into the new? Say it again. Is anybody ready to step out of the old into the new? <laughs> Somebody in this house, you need to activate your faith even right now and take a step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 take a step. Hallelujah. It's a symbolic a symbol of moving into the new. Could you grab your neighbor by the hand and, and, say, and tell your neighbor, I want to help you step into your new anointing. Tell him, I want to help you step into your new position. I want to help you step into some new joy, into some new doors. Give the Lord a shout of praise if you will. Look what he says in Isaiah 43. Look what he says in Isaiah 43. Hmm. Y'all can sit down. Don't make me nervous. <laughs> Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. I mean, you're familiar with this text. This is how he talks. He says, remember he not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Now look what he's saying. He says, behold. I will do a new thing. All right, George, all right. So when will he do it? Well, there's the answer. Now it shall spring forth. 
Now, uh, let me tell you, see, you can make up your mind, you can walk out of this house, same old same. Or you can make up your mind, I'm leaving changed. I'm not, I'll never be the same. God is about doing something now. See, the scripture tells us here that God is doing something fresh and new. But the condition and the requirement of receiving the new is to let go of the old. One of the greatest hindrances of your breakthrough is your memory. Amen. We have this tendency to want to drag our past into our future. But God is saying the only way to get to the new is to let go of the old. Mm -hmm. When Elijah ascended into the heavens in a chariot of fire, Elisha prepared himself to receive a double portion anointing. He prepared himself by stripping himself of his old clothes. In other words, he took a whole of the old clothing and rent them into pieces. To get the new, you're going to have to separate yourself from the old. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically in some cases. In other words, you may have to get some new friends. <laughs> you have to let go. You have to let go of the old stuff. Get it out of your life. Forget about it. You have to let go of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Some of you, some of you in this house, you have destroyed every good thing that has come into your life because you are processing everything through the lens of past disappointments, past hurts, past wounds. And it doesn't matter what he or she or they did to you. It doesn't really matter what they said or didn't say about you. It doesn't matter if they cheated on you, if they slid upon you, if they stabbed you in the back. You have to let it go. You've got to let it go. You have to forgive. I have to stop here just for a little minute and say that it's time to get things right. If there's something in your life that shouldn't be there, then it's time to let it go. Mm. Ministers, you thought I'm just preaching to the pastors. No. You're a minister too, so I'm talking to you. Mm. Oh, feel that cold breeze. <laughs> Ministers, you cannot play around with the world and have the power of heaven operating in your life. You can't play the field carrying God's anointing on your life. Let me try and make it more plain if I can. You cannot entertain a spirit of lust and pornography and have communion, sweet communion with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work. You've got to let it go. <laughs> See, some of you are so caught up in tradition of how it used to be that you cannot even enjoy when God moves in a different way. Well, when we were down there in the old facility, we didn't, we weren't as crazy as we are right now. We did things much, hey. Forget about the past, it's a new day. Hallelujah. God is bigger than his last move. God is bigger than his last move. <laughs> I let it go, let it go, child, let it go. I want to talk to you who are standing. I want to talk to you who are standing on the edge of your miracle. Uh, there are those listening to this message who are standing on the dividing line between yes and no, between enough and more than enough, between struggling and stressing and resting in his blessings, between debt and debtless, between weeping and rejoicing, between uh, one step between emptiness and too much to handle. Truth is, most of us has been in that place before. So close, so close, you could almost reach out and touch it. So close it see, uh, uh, to see the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter come home. So close to see your family restored. Uh, your financial breakthrough coming. So close uh, to starting their own business, writing that book, recording that CD. So close possessing a promise. We've all been in that place once before. Oh, but for one reason or 
another, we have failed to cross over. Now it could have been most probably because fear of the unknown. It could have been because of unbelief or pride, memories of past disappointments, or just the unwillingness, uh, the unwise decisions and actions birthed out of the flesh. But God Almighty God sent me here to help you through, just to push you over the edge a little bit. Hallelujah. Could you give your neighbor just a little, be gentle with them. Just give them a little push then. Tell them, say, I want to help you get through. Tell them I want to help you get through. We have an old saying, always a bridesmaid and never a bride. In other words, you're the one who is destined to do without. You're the one who's destined to watch everybody else get theirs. You're the one destined to see everybody else <laughs> promoted, blessed, prospered, married off, break out in ministry. And you just sit on the sideline and do without. But I'm here this morning to say and declare this morning to you that the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of a man in the Bible at the pool of Bethesda, the place of blessings. You remember him. No doubt, no doubt this man, oh, he has seen many people get their blessings. No doubt this man has seen many people get their deliverance. They get, they, he saw them getting their breakthrough. And no doubt the devil tortured him tormented him and told him you're never going to get out of debt you're never going to get out of the projects you'll never start your own business you'll never see your family saved oh, you're gonna, you'll never find that godly mate you're never going to have a successful ministry you're always going to struggle worry push and pull just to make ends meet but one day Jesus stood right in front of him he did not address any of the negative things that he he had experience in his life uh, what the devil told him he could never have he just asked him one question wilt thou be made whole at that very moment there weren't enough disease in the world to keep him sick there weren't enough poverty in the world to keep him broke there weren't enough devils even two legged devils to keep him bound the only one that could keep him bound was himself I came to tell somebody this morning, well, the only one who can keep you from your blessing is you. <laughs> the only one who can keep you from your prophecy coming to pass is you. Uh, uh, not too long ago, me and mama, we walked into a pizza place. Hmm. It was buffet night. There were pizzas all over in that, in that food bar. There were spaghetti, potatoes, cheese sticks, and even the salad bar. I told the fella, two buffets, please. It was now 10 after 8. He said, sorry, sir. The buffet ended at 8 o'clock. I said, sir, thank you. And we left the facility. The wife said, so why did we leave? And I said, I refuse to stay in a place where I can see it, where I can smell it, but can't partake or possess it. <laughs> see, it's not just enough for me just to be close. It's not enough just for me to be in a place where it happens. It's not just enough for, for me to walk by and look, smell it. It's not just enough for me to sit around and watch everybody else get theirs and I, 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 I can't have it. No, 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 no. That frustrates me. I want to pull my hair out. There's a lot of folks. We're sitting around and see everybody else get blessed. And you just uh, sit there and, oh, I wish I could have. Hey, you can have it. you gotta, <laughs> you got to get in when the more water moves. Hallelujah. Uh, what I'm saying to you to this morning is that it frustrates your faith to sit on, down on the edge of your breakthrough uh, and, and just talk about how good it could be. Uh, and one of these days, listen, faith is a possessor. Faith don't sit on the sideline and wish and wonder. No faith possesses. Faith without works is dead. You got to take a hold of it. Do something. Faith will never be satisfied just to look or just to smell or just to talk how good it was. Yeah. 
some of us in this house, in a spiritual sense, you are, you are doing exactly the same thing. You're walking around God's buffet table of God's blessings and promises. And you're just satisfied just to look, look it over, smell it, and talk to each other how good it could be and how good it should be. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now, won't that be nice? <laughs> but here comes somebody who got there on time and paid the price. <laughs> And they started eating and everything you've been looking at, <laughs> smelling and talking about. <laughs> See what happened, what happened? <laughs> Instead of being glad for them, you get mad at them. Why? <laughs> because they got there on time uh, and they, 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 pay, they, they were willing to pay the price. <laughs> yeah, they were willing to move when it was time to move and pay the price when it was time to pay the price. <laughs> See, uh, 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 um, will you... Uh, You'll have to excuse me just for a little bit here. I really don't want to, I don't want you to get mad at me. I, I, I kind of want you to like me. Uh, but listen to me. The fact is, I'm going to get my blessing. You do whatever you want to do, I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to get my breakthrough. I, I'm going to get my miracle. You can stand around and watch. You can criticize and you can analyze. You can call me undignified. You can talk about me. You can put me down. But you can't keep me out. Oh no. God said I could have it. And I'm not going to spend the rest of my life talking about what I've missed. For 40 years. The first generation of the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness till all the doubters died off. Huh? They could only talk about what they've missed because they wouldn't move when it was time to move. And they were not willing to pay the price when it was time to pay the price. I don't know who I'm talking to, but until now, you've just been satisfied. And I've been to some churches where they still sing that old song. I'll be satisfied. You remember that? No. Uh, you assemblies God people. I'll be satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Sorry. See, you're just satisfied just to be close. Satisfied just thinking about it. Satisfied just singing about it, talking about it, dreaming about it. But I want to tell you right now, it's time to move. It's time to pay the price. And if you don't make a move, you're going to frustrate your faith. Somebody needs to get on your feet right about right now and start moving. Take a prophetic step. Activate your faith. Somebody needs to dance. Somebody needs to dance in your blessing. If you can't walk, stomp your feet. If you can't stomp your feet, wave your arms. But do something and tell somebody, I'm on my way. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a pray. Give him something. Hallelujah. Come on, I got another hour to go at least. Try and sit on. I got another hour to go. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. You've come past this mountain long enough. This is just another way of saying it's time for a change. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody here this morning. <laughs> uh, but you know in the natural when it's time for seasons uh, to change. You can feel it in the atmosphere. <laughs> Sometimes there's a period of tug of war. Uh, when one season gives way to another. Uh, no wonder we have storms. And, and here in Illinois, this part of the world, you've seen a few storms. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about a little wimpy storm with a little few thunder and a little pea size. A little hay. No, no, no. I'm talking some major storms. Uh, mm, but I'm just wondering is anybody feeling what I'm talking about 
Hallelujah. Is anybody feeling the tugging and the pulling? Is anybody feeling the urgency in the atmosphere? Change is in the atmosphere. Something is pulling me. Something is stirring me. I used to be comfortable. I'm not comfortable anymore. I used to be satisfied. I used to be, but not anymore. No, 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 no. I'm not comfortable anymore. I'm not satisfied anymore. In fact, I'm uncomfortable. I'm disturbed. I'm agitated. I'm perturbed. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Ah, uh, you cannot just sit. There on the pew with your hands folded. You can't just sit watch and watch the world coming to the church and not say anything. You can't just sit there while they strip the blood of Jesus out of our songbooks and not say anything. You can't just sit there while they teach a, a, a damnable doctrines that any road you choose will get you to heaven ah, and not say anything. Ah. And they preach this kind of nonsense uh, that everybody is saved already. They just don't know it. Uh, and that everybody will be saved in the end. Uh, mm, and there's not such a thing really as right or wrong. Uh, it's just what you choose and whatever you choose is all right. Uh, you cannot approve, my friend, what God has disapproved. Uh, you cannot play unholy music in a holy sanctuary. Uh, just because you put the name Jesus in a song doesn't make a gospel. You want to come and offer a good, you want to come and offer a good Christian song? And so now we're going to sing Jesus Take the Wheel. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You, I know you don't know about Jesus taking the wheel. It's all right. You need to get to Nashville. Hallelujah. Yeah. I love God. I love country music and I love my beer. They want to sing that in church, you devil. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm messing a little bit here. <laughs> listen, listen, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. We, we are worshiping God. We are worshiping God. Not with our heads or our intellect. No, 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 no. We have come, we have become so entangled in the world with the world it seems we cannot discern uh, uh, truth anymore my brother sister and you know that everybody's a Christian now but it's not everybody that is Christ like uh, we have taken and made some new advances every day uh, look at the advances we've taken and, and that we've made uh, and because of that now we let everything go so he can sleep with her and she can have a baby from a married man and still be the praise and worship leader in church this, uh, this one is having an affair with that one's wife. <laughs> and this one can, uh, can direct the choir uh, and he's straight homosexual. <laughs> Uh, this one can sing because of the talent and she's a lesbian. Uh, you know what I know it and everybody knows it. Uh, and nothing is being done. Uh, what, uh, what are we handing the next generation, my brother? Uh, there's no more morality in the church. Uh, and we will say nothing about it. I know my time is again. You grown folk, and so I can say this respectfully. But she was handling that microphone stand as she was in a in a bar with the, that poles that they swing around, the groaning, the moaning. Mm. You get my drift. I can go further, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, this is How can you bring the world into the church house? Ma 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 ma. God, God, these things I'm talking is, 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 is what I've, 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 I've come to know these things personally. Mm, there's no more morality, my brother, sister. <laughs> uh, you can't just sit around and, and, and act like everything is okay while homosexuals and lesbians are being ordained as ministers of the gospel and not say anything. <laughs> uh, well, 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 preacher, we, 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 we don't want to offend people that want to come to church. 
Well, the Bible says in Jude 1 and 3, contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. We got to fight for what we've got. I, I wasn't here, but I, but I heard the testimonies. When Oscar, when Pastor Oscar Owens, when God called him into the ministry, the that he was, hallelujah, and because of that, uh, look what we are, where we are now, no compromising with the God, hallelujah, we need to contend for the faith, hallelujah, this is, this is not what Jesus gave us, my sister, well, 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 we will have to correct people, even if they are big tithers, even if they bring offerings, so even if they are talented, even if they have all the gifts, so what? We will have to correct them. We will, uh, uh, yeah, to, otherwise uh, their souls will uh, land up in hell. Uh, yeah, how are we going to have, how, how are we going to have Christian nightclubs? We don't have nightclubs in church. The Bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. I'd say to those folks, turn the lights up, baby. We want to see what y'all doing. I hear the spirit of the Lord is saying, it's time for a change. I'm just closing. I'm closing almost. Uh, there's a change in the atmosphere. Uh, and, and part of the change is God's people are getting fed up. Uh, somebody's getting a backbone. God is raising up men and women, boys and girls, uh, who are not ashamed of the gospel and who will not bow at, the, at this age. Ah, uh, yes, the spirit of this age. And will not compromise with their faith in Almighty God. Maybe like me, maybe like me, you're feeling uncomfortable. You're feeling agitated, even sometimes frustrated. And you don't know why, I'll tell you why. Here's part of the reason why. See, you were created for more. Hear me. You were created for more. Oh, God. You were created to possess more of the power of God and manifest more of His glory. You were created with the capacity to carry the same anointing that Jesus had and do the same works that Jesus did and even greater works according to the scripture. The discomfort, the agitation, the frustration is your spirit telling you it's time for a change. Have some of y'all wondered, why, why do I wake up three, four o'clock in the morning and can't sleep? And you go and sit in the kitchen and make yourself a cup of coffee, whatever you make, thinking, ah, it's the Spirit of God inside of you that's driving you to hit the floor. Hallelujah. Mm. It's time for a change. You see, when my feet hurts, then I know it's time for a change of shoes. I need a bigger shoe, a more comfortable shoe. Some of you have never been there, but it's all right. When your eyes start burning and whatever, then you know it's time for a new prescription, an eyeglass prescription. I'm talking to somebody today who's agitated and stirred in your spirit because you sense God calling you to another level. <laughs> Many times the agitation, the frustration you feel is the unwillingness of the flesh to make the necessary adjustments. But I believe somebody here this morning is going to say yes. Who's going to say yes? Somebody in this house this morning, are you going to let go of the past? Somebody today is going to move with God and you're going to pay the price. And when you pay the price, you're going to see the glory of God. You're going to see the glory of God in your ministry, in your family. You, when you pay the price, you're going to see the glory of God in your finances, in your health, in your relationships. It's time for a change. Is there anybody in this house who knows that it's time for a change? Let me read one scripture. Let me read one scripture. And I'm done, and I'm done, and I'm done. Second Corinthians 3 and 18. Second Corinthians 3 and 18. There's many other translations that says it's so beautiful. But I read from the King James. Look what he says. He says, Paul is saying, but we all. With open face, 
beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. It's talking about looking into a mirror. I changed into the image, in the same image, going actually from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. My friend, it's time for a change. It's time for a change. Are you ready for a change? Are you ready for a change? Are you, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you sick and tired of coming to church, sitting in the pew, fall asleep, go home and sleep some more? If you're ready for a change, if you want to walk out of this house this morning, change in your spirit, in your mind, in your body, then I ask you to join me right in the area, right in the pulpit area. Come and join us up front. If you're ready for a change, you say, I'm ready for a change. Our things got to change. My prayer life has to change. The way I live for God has to change. I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for a change. Ah. Mm. Year at full gospel. You hear me? Year at full gospel. You've had some of the greatest men and women of God come through your doors over the years. And many times, I know what I'm talking about. We take a lot of things for granted. But I challenge you this week, and I believe these men, women that will come, going to minister and you know some of them ask to speak to them for a minute and ask them how come they got what they've got ask a bishop ask Owens how come he's got what he's got if I was Oscar Owens I would stay home and look after mama myself myself you can't keep the man out from the house of God because something happened to him. Ask him what happened. One of your favorite preachers that come to this house is Bishop Webb. Ask him if you can just talk to him for a minute. Ask him how come he's got what he's got. I'll tell you. He'll tell you he wasn't sitting playing Nintendo all day long sitting with his xbox <laughs> i'll tell you how he got it he made up his mind a change gotta come a change i gotta hit the floor i saw i saw a little poster in a, in a church house i know exactly where that church is Ash, ashland kentucky the side of the wall it says i saw it down his knees it says make war on the floor that's where it's at that's where it's at. Not a lot of talk. Not a lot of nonsense. But I pray that you walk out of this house today changed. 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 This conference, these few days, your life let it never be the same. But you walk out of here changed in the name of Jesus. Reverend, I'm going to ask you, sir, just to anoint some of these. Where's these? I, I want all the pastors just to stand up front of you. All those pastors, if you all don't mind. Those pastors that came from far and near. Come on, stand right up front of you. Bring your wives with you. Come on. Bring, come on, bring your wives with you. All you men of God, your pastors, come on. I, I want your pastors just to stand here. I saw a few. Come on, bring, bring them. Come on. Where are Y'all not pastors? What are y'all? Hallelujah. Come on, where's your wives? I want, my, I want, my, I want, I want a, 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 a pastor, a bishop to anoint your hands. I want him to anoint your hands. Come on, I want you to anoint your hands. Your pastor, stand up front. I want him to anoint your hands. Come on, I'm going to ask him to anoint your hands. Your pastors, in the name of Jesus. Where's your wives? So, are you married? Where's your wives? Let them at home.